I'm joined by TV Narendran of Tata Steel. Mr. Narendran, thank you so much for speaking to Bloomberg. A uh, quick question on B20, as that's the context. Uh, what are you hoping of the many proposals that business leaders have made here and discussed here will actually fructify into some meaningful decision or action when the leaders' summit happens in September? I think the most important uh, subject is about climate change and transition mm -hmm. and transition finance. And I think one of the issues which has uh, not happened after Paris is that funds were to flow from the global north to the global south. That has not happened. I think uh, a lot of the recommendations are around scaling up of technologies, uh, also funding this transition. Mm -hmm. And I hope something can come out of the G20 discussions on the subject so that there's more confidence that uh, there will be money which flows from the global north to the global south. Also very important for industries like absolutely, yours that have absolutely. to abide by not just international standards, local standards, as well as carbon taxes Absolutely. in different parts of the world. Yeah. Let's talk the steel business. How are you assessing demand globally in China, key consumer, and then of course in India, which has been the one big yeah. bright spot? I think the India story has been uh, much better than the global story. So the consumption in India is strong. I think uh, despite this being the monsoon period when steel consumption is a bit weak, we are seeing that it's been quite strong construction is going on. I think uh, last month because of the floods there was some disruption. Auto is very strong as you can see. Uh, pretty much uh, all sectors in auto are going to catch up with 2019 numbers mm -hmm. which is great. Uh, it has a big multiplier effect. China has been a bit disappointing. I think post uh, the removal of the restrictions all of us expected it to bounce back. So did the Chinese steel industry. They started producing more but that recovery didn't happen. The real estate sector, the construction sector in China is still a bit weak. Uh, so we have a situation where China is exporting more than they did for the last few years and that is causing some pressure on steel prices internationally. But I think the worst is behind us. Uh, Chinese exports have started dropping a bit. Uh, so international prices are stabilizing a bit. Uh, it is also reflected in coal prices going up a bit. So I think uh, the worst is behind us as far as steel prices are concerned. So demand has been strong, prices have been more reflective of what's happening in international prices. Europe, markets. everyone is expressing concern about the recovery in Europe and you have big exposure there. So I have to ask you that question. So if you look at Europe, uh, the auto sector is still doing quite okay, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the construction activity hasn't really picked up much. Uh, uh, so I do see a challenge in Europe for some time. Um, next much? year, no, at least this year. At least this year. This year. Calendar what is year. The positive, yeah, calendar year. The positive thing is, last year we were hurt very badly by high gas prices, mm. high electricity prices. Correct. All that has come back to uh, long-term levels. You know, so on the cost side, we are not under the kind of pressures we were last year. On the demand side, I expect things to get better by next year. Uh, of course, uh, European governments are spending more on defense. And if and when there's a uh, uh, ceasefire in Ukraine, we expect a lot of reconstruction activity to pick up in Ukraine. But that's like something more medium term than immediate. But I think immediate cost pressures will be less and hopefully demand will pick up. I ask you this question every time we meet. Have you met resolution in your conversation with the British government? Well, uh, we are making good progress. Let me You've put it that You've been saying way. that now for over a year, so that clearly hasn't well, been that uh, much no, progress. Well, no, which I said earlier, we were also impacted by the changes in government uh, over the of years. Of course, yes. But now, over the last few months, I think we've had a lot of good conversations, and hopefully, we'll find a solution Have sooner than later. Have the numbers changed? Well, uh, the government... You put a 1.5 billion demand, I don't want to right? talk specific numbers, but uh, there is a conversation between us and the government. So where are you on... going to settle? Close out <laughs> of one or 1.5? We'll, we, we'll tell you when we How settle. How far are you from a decision? Well, uh, hopefully soon, because again, it depends so on the government. weeks, months? Hopefully weeks. Hopefully weeks. Yeah. So you're expecting a resolution with the British government regarding the financing that you've spoken to them about within weeks? Hopefully. Well, okay, we live on hope. <laughs> All right. Uh, one of the key things that your industry and your company are specifically dealing with is this green transition, right? Now, you have a stated objective of doubling capacity in India, which is your key market, uh, to 40 million tons. Can you talk me through how much of this will be using new technology to meet the green objective and therefore what that will mean in terms of escalation in build costs, capital expansion? Sure. So, you know, uh there are two aspects to our growth from 20 to 40. Part of it is coming through the recycling route. We're setting up the first facility in Ludhiana. We've already set up scrap recycling facilities. That's going to be a 0.8 million ton facility. And if uh, that model works, we will replicate that over the next few years. So that will contribute a few million tons to the 40 million tons. 
But the big chunk of the growth is still going to come through the blast furnace route because in eastern India, we don't have gas yet. If there was gas available uh, at a price uh, at which it's economical and in volumes that helps us, we would have invested in gas-based uh, uh, DRI and hence steel making would have been greener. So we're talking to the government to say it's important to have gas available in eastern region. And eventually when hydrogen is available in plenty and cheap, then we can switch from gas to hydrogen. But the switch from coal to gas is the important switch. And that can only happen when gas is available in the east. I think there's movement there, but I don't expect investments to be made on gas-based production route till 2030. Till 2030? Yeah, because infrastructure needs to be built. The first LNG terminals have just come up in Damra. Uh, the priority from the government point of view will be for the fertilizer sector. So that's why it's very important as we plan the transition to a greener future to make sure that the infrastructure is in place and alternate fuels are available for the process industry like steel. So it's only 40 plus million. That's right. That will actually so, move towards greener technology absolutely. for steel making in your case. So let me put it this way. Uh, even the journey to 40 million, we are trying to make it more and more efficient from that a carbon I understand, footprint. But that's incremental. We are also doing a lot of work on carbon capture and usage. Correct. So yeah. these two will help negate the impact of the carbon that we emit. All yeah. right. Uh, you know, I, I want to ask you quickly two more questions, very short. Uh, net debt levels have increased from the lows of 50,000 crores to about 70,000 crores. Are you going to embark on another plan to cut that back down to 50,000 crores? So we were at about 52, I think, uh, mm -hmm. and we went up uh, to about 68, largely because of two reasons. One is we acquired Nilachal last year, that was yeah. about 12,000 crores. And then uh, last year when the coal prices went up, the working capital went up very significantly. Mm -hmm. uh, so now the coal prices are settling to longer term levels. And uh, the Nilachal debt is still there, but Nilachal has uh, started producing steel. It's positive EBITDA. It will help reduce the debt. Uh, so just now we are at around 71, like you said. The ambition for this year is to bring it down by at least a billion dollars. So uh, I think we are now back to where we were before. So last year we missed the goal of reducing by a billion dollars, but we are back on uh, that progression. So this year you will cut a billion For this billion year dollars. we are still chasing to cut a billion dollars. Of debt. FY24. That's right. Correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Seventy five percent of your production will be India. You've come full circle from the days of the chorus acquisition. I have to ask you this. Yeah. Are you going to rethink that strategy? Uh, are you going to be focused only on the domestic market over the course of the next decade, at least for that 40 million? Absolutely. I think uh, India is the most profitable market for us. Uh, the Indian production is one of the lowest cost uh, productions in the world for us. Uh, so uh, it's a better place for us to invest in growth. The demand is growing. Uh, so for those reasons, we will continue to invest to grow in India. Uh, in uh, Europe, of course, Netherlands has traditionally been a strong place. Correct. UK is where we had a problem. And that becomes uh, a smaller and smaller part of our portfolio because the rest of the portfolio is growing. And no inorganic strategy in India? Not just now. Not Whether just now. It's I think, a uh, public sector <laughs> steel making company or a private metals conglomerate that <laughs> wants to divest its steel. I think business. our existing sites allow us the runway to grow to 40, 45 million tons. So I think we are happy with what we have. Mr. Narendran, okay. thank, thank you for you. your thank time. You. Thank, thank you. you very much.